free your mind and remember winners are not people who never fail but people who never quit all i ever wanted was to sail hello and welcome to once more with feeling the storm the newest album from tech nine um bit of a different fare for us because we've never done a straight up rap album before and well Tech 9 is an especially big leap for us because he is what is known as a chopper rapper which is basically speed rapping it is pretty fast and pretty impressive yeah um this album uh has a billion tracks for one yeah I uh, it we're doing the deluxe edition version but we're only going to be covering the first 20 there's like 12 extra tracks on the bonus disc uh, we might do something extra regarding the bonus disc a little bit down the line but um, we're just covering the main album because it's the kind of thing you're probably more likely to find yeah and also the bonus disc the songs on the bonus disc won't necessarily tie into the main driving force of the album proper so this is why we don't tend to cover when Metallica and um, Epica have extra tracks and things like that because it's not necessarily tied into the main album that and you know, there's a stupid thing that still seems to exist of certain countries getting different bonus tracks. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, you're already living in the wrong place in the world. Have fun with not having this track. Unless you, like, pirate it or import a copy specifically for one track. It's stupid. Yeah. Well, that's the one thing that you can say about this album, that there is no country difference with what album has what songs. It's just, it depends on whether you get the deluxe edition or the normal version. And if you pre-ordered the deluxe edition, because that's got yet another track. Funnily enough... So many tracks. Yeah. So, uh, where to begin with this album? Well, I guess it would probably be a case of doing what stands out to us and what doesn't. Yeah. And the simple way to say this is the second half stands out a lot more, in my opinion. And I think you'd agree with that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, I was saying that the second half of the album... Well, okay, second half is a bit of a misnomer, because I'd say it starts to amp up from sort of track eight onwards. But Poisoning the Well onwards is when it really goes into... Oh my god, this is... Really good stuff. Yeah. I mean, I think when I heard the first track, it didn't really grab my attention very much at all. Yeah. Also, it has some very obvious kind of auto-tuning, which I think is probably done for effect, but it sounds kind of off. Yeah. It had good lines. I mean, I, as I was saying earlier, I really liked the um, whole simile of likening his prowess within the industry to Ron Jeremy's sexual strength. <laughs> Yeah. That that was one of those lines that just made me go, wait, what? <laughs> okay. Yeah. As a person, when it comes to music, I, I'm not one that you know, focuses too much on the lyrics. Yeah. Except when it comes to rap. Because it seems, personally, I think when it comes to rap, the lyrics actually have a lot more of an important part in the music than a lot of other genres. Yeah. I think that's one of the reasons why I'm not so hot on the first half of this album, because a lot of the songs just feel like your usual brag rap type stuff. Other than Wi Fi or Beefy. Yeah. <laughs> Beefy's a pretty fun job. Yeah. What I really want to know is who is Chris Coleco? Because. He seems to show up in like pretty much nearly half of the songs on the album as a featuring artist. It's like, damn, you got a lot of invention here. Yeah, let's see, um... It's not a name I've heard of before. Well, talking of names I have heard of before, it's interesting to see there's a track featuring Jonathan Davis, the frontman of Korn. Yeah! I just saw that name, I was like, is that the Jonathan Davis I think it is? I don't even listen to Korn much these days, I used to do a lot more when I was like an angsty teenager, but I still recognise the name. So. When I, when I was saw when I saw that I was sort of like what I, no surely surely not but then when I thought about it it's not that surprising when you consider another collaboration he did a few years back with Serge Tankian of System of a Down yeah I mean knowledge of that connection as well this is a case of probably well, maybe he just likes that kind of music in the downtime or whatever 
Well, he doesn't necessarily perform it himself. He's still a fan of it. Yeah. He mentioned something about heavy metal at one point when the songs as well. Mm. Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. It's not like the only time we've ever had weird combinations. I mean, wasn't the last Pendulum album had a crossover with Freedom in Flames at that? Okay. Um, <laughs> so genre-defying collaborations do happen. Yeah, um, not quite half the album, but like a third of it. Yeah, it's a good chunk. Yeah. I mean, a lot of cases, albums a lot of featured artists have their problems. <laughs> Lindsay Sterling. Um, uh, but yeah, in this case, it's quite obviously a Tech Nine album with a bunch of people helping him out on various songs, and for the most part, they seem to fit in rather nicely. It feels like a natural fit. Yeah. Um, so, no complaints there. Yeah. Uh, there is a particular artist that I noticed. Um, oh, this is on the bonus disc, so. I mean, just for clarity, we didn't listen to the bonus disc because it's sort of like, this album's already been out a while, so we need to just focus on the main. Also, the full version's like two hours long. Yeah. It's a long time for an album. Um... We wanted to have an episode, it was like, and here we have an episode focusing on all of the bonus tracks and the releases we've done so far. Yeah. Oh, God. Like a 17-hour episode or something like that, because there's so bloody many of them. Especially when he has that list that has pretty much half an album, so you can extra stuff as well. Well, um, uh, I actually got the um, special edition Metallica album, and you know how many extra tracks are on that? Quite a few. Yeah, there's like 15 extra tracks on that. Most of them are are live versions of songs they've already released. It would just be a matter of us saying whether or not it was well recorded. Yeah, I mean, I think it's more natural when a bonus stuff has a bunch of live versions of previous songs. It only has like 10 or 15 or whatever completely new tracks. It was like, the hell did this lot come from? Yeah. Well, it's like with Epica when they said they had like another album's worth of stuff that they didn't think was quite good enough for the main album. In some cases, there's like so many songs or something, and they're like, okay, this one's not good enough for the main release, but we still like them as so a big release them anyway. And then of course you've got bands like The Cure, which has sort of a four-disc collection of B-sides. Because mm. so much stuff I have over the years. But yeah, this album, as I said earlier at the start, it didn't really catch me that much at the first. Mm. Until Shurvatra, the third track. Because the speed rap at the end of that is really impressive. That's the one point that kind of caught me, it's like, okay, this is, this is actually really cool. I mean, basically, when the speed rap a bit came, it put me in mind of the Ark of the Covenant opening. <laughs> just that the face is yeah. melting away. I think from then onwards, it caught my attention a lot more, because it seemed that the backing tracks, which I think are quite an important part of the rap, um, they seem to get more and more interesting. Kind of, we kind of, one song has, like, I think it's like it now. Mm. There's also kind of just brass instruments in the background, and that sounds really cool. Yeah. Uh, I think, for me, the, sort of, the songs, which I'd say really got my interest um hold on me which that was a bit of a okay i'm relating a bit too much to this song um i don't think i'll divulge the reasons why but i'm sure pierce can understand yeah we're well, gonna hold on me it's kind of like a rap ballad i guess yeah which is interesting so in one of the one of the featured artists actually makes a lot of difference. It has her doing kind of ballady, wishy washy vocals, and then has him rapping, mm. like interchanging each other. It actually really works nicely. I don't think wishy washy is the right way to describe. Yeah, I, I so that's the first thing that came to my head, and after I said it, I was like, mm, doesn't quite work. But I can't think of what I actually meant to say. Um, soft spoken. Yeah, that works better. Yeah. Uh, it's like, hold on, me. Poisoning the well is. Very strong. Yeah. Um, Buddha. <laughs> Buddha's just. Oh, let's get high. Let's get high as fuck. Uh, uh, no gun control, which. Jesus. <laughs> That's when we used to that to me on the first listen as well. Yeah. It's just. It's at one point where it's like, I don't want to be controlled. Mm. It's like, yeah, this is kind of just revolting against obscene amounts of control from the government, presume. Yeah. Which, well, seeing all the uh, issues with gun control going on in America, it's not. It's quite a. What's the word? Touchy subject, I guess. A little bit. <laughs> um, and. But hey, that, is that what rap's pop, uh, no, well known for? It's just going on to subjects that other genres wouldn't necessarily touch. Mm. 
lot of good rap, especially is is very much focusing on the kind of the real life topics. That it's like, yeah, this is what life is like. We're gonna make songs about it. Yeah, um, like uh, the Lupe Fiasco song "Bitch Bad." Now, on immediate hearing of that title, you would expect the standard bling and bitches type song where it's singing about this really idolised hooker type, that sort of song. But it's actually discussing how we can identify the term bitch, you know, in that depending on how it's used, that can convey a lot of meaning to it. You know, you it could mean, like, Bitch can be thrown around in a way that it's sort of almost like it's an insult for women who present themselves as being independent and you know strong-willed. But it can also be in reference to what rappers often mean by bitch, which is hookers and all that sort of thing. So it's a it's a very interesting analysis of the perceptions of, you know, the word bitch. I think I've said that word more times than I have in the past year. <laughs> What's more for feeling? Bitch. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. I, I'd say the earlier the earlier parts of the album, their strength is purely in the lyricism. Their musical hooks are a bit uh kinda of just there? Yeah. Yeah, it, up until I get it now, there's nothing really catches me much in regards to the actual music. Yeah. Um, but the lyrics are good. Also, despite the entire fact that Weefy is just based off the fact that someone couldn't pronounce it properly. Yeah. This is the best thing. <laughs> there's a little skit beforehand, a separate track, it kind of explains why that is as well. It's great. Yeah. This is one of the few times where it's sort of like, actually, I'm okay with there being a skit on the album. Because it's actually genuinely funny, because it's not the typical manufactured humour. It's just this random anecdote of what happened to them whilst they were going into their hotel. Yeah. You know, that I, I'm fine with turning up on an album, because it's sort of like, yeah, that works. Um, I will say... With regards to the needle, now this is where we get into the typical how we'd rearrange things. Um, I feel like the needle should have stayed as the last track on the main album. Yeah, especially considering the topic it's dealing with, it would have made sense to be a final a finale. The actual last track that they've got on the deluxe edition works as a last track, but I think the needle would be better as the ending one. Mm. It's a bit like with um, oh, Threat to Survival by Shinedown, how Misfits works as an ending track, but Black Cadillac would be better. Yeah. Um, <sighs> I think the, the lyrical contents later on the album also is very strong in places. I mean, The Needle, Till I'm Gone, What If It's Me, those three specifically kind of stand out to me a lot. Yeah. I mean, Till I'm Gone... <laughs> Till I'm Gone I kind of related to as well. Hmm. I think one of the best lines in the entire album I say is a bit at the start of uh, What If It Was Me where it's like winners are not people who never fail but people who never quit yeah it, it's one of those you know if you're having a shitty day or shitty week which less said we about that the better huh <laughs> working in retail at Christmas like I am working in retail at business just dealing with people people what a bunch of bastards well, the worst thing is about people, people. <laughs> Unless you're a listener, in which case you're pretty cool. Maybe. We don't know who you are. You might be really cool with listening to us, and you might be an asshole some other times. But, well, people are assholes anyway. We're all assholes sometimes. Well, consider the fact that um, my ex is still subscribed to my channel, so for all we know, she <laughs> listens to these episodes. We listen to you talking about her. <laughs> We're watching you. We know what you're doing. We're on to you. <laughs> it's, got, it's suddenly got a very meta as hell. A little bit. Don't we always, though? It's more so than usual, though. Yeah. But yeah, this will most likely be an album I go back to. Yeah. You know, it does have its weak points. So. I mean, there are some artists I do get on with. I mean, I'm pretty fan of Run the Jewels, for example. But this is solid stuff. Yeah. 
I'd say this isn't one of his stronger albums, but then again, this is like his 20th album, so... So look, Storm is a 17th studio album. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of albums. It's sort of like, after 17 albums... <laughs> it's not always going to be amazing. Yeah. But it's still definitely worth checking out. Um, personal score, I'd be inclined to give it a 3, 3.5 out of 5. Yeah, I'll probably give it a 3, simply because the first half of the album, well, it's the first, like, six or seven songs or so are not that great. Yeah. But the second half really does bring it up a lot. And the actual skill in regards to the rapping and the lyrical content is pretty solid throughout as well, so... Yeah. Um, one line that did make us a bit puzzled was smoking Jesse Pinkman. <laughs> oh yeah, that. I was like, huh? It's sort of like, what? What? What's the implication of that? Are you saying you smoke meth? Or is Jesse... Are you saying you smoke Jesse Pinkman himself? <laughs> Just roll him up into a spliff. <laughs> Can you smoke human flesh? That's the question. To be fair, you probably could get high off of Jesse Pinkman. I mean, please say in the comments below, if Jesse Pinkman has become slang for meth, fair news. It wouldn't I, surprise me, actually. Yeah. I, it wouldn't be a surprise. I, I'm just, I am genuinely curious. I do not know. I was sort of like, what? Smoking Jesse Pinkman? What? What does that mean? Um, it's a bit on the nose when it comes to the slang terms, though. Yeah. Yeah, but overall, very solid album. And I must admit, I haven't actually listened to any other Tech Nine stuff. It's a name I've heard of quite a lot, but never actually looked into. So I will probably go back and check out some of his other stuff now. Yeah. Um, if you want a much, much lighter song than a lot of what's on this album, there is a very stupid song that he did that is simply <laughs> called Ariola. <laughs> Just look that up. There it is. Look it up. It's a. Well, just go Google. Google. Areola. <laughs> it's like a dog going bad anyway. <laughs> well, include Tech Nine. Uh... <laughs> Can't show that in a Christian country. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, he, according to him, he's called a sinner. So maybe that's one of the reasons why. Maybe the boy is a sinner simply because he wrote a song about Areolas. <laughs> Or is it because he has areolas? No, it is about women's areolas. It is quite explicit about that. Um, I will say, the featuring artists are interesting, to say the least. I mean, obviously, you've got Chris Calico, and he's a label mate, so that that's clearly why he's on so much. Ah, fair enough. That, that would explain why he's... They're probably friends as well. Yeah. Um... But you've got uh, oh, who's? Do you know who Stevie Stone is? Mm, Cause I do. Um, another rapper signed to the label. I, I guess that much. Yeah, he's another rapper who's signed to Tech Nine's label. So, um, uh -huh. but the more peculiar ones are things like Jonathan Davis, of course. Boys to Men. Yep. I saw Boys to Men listed there. I was like, okay then. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, fair play to the... I mean, boys to men are pretty cool, so fair play. But it's one of those... Okay, um, take nine, boys to men. I, I, I guess they intersect because there's roots in rap from R&B? Mm, maybe. Maybe you just thought these guys are pretty cool, so do you want to come and chill out on my song? Yeah. Uh, but also you've got Gary Clark Jr., who, from my understanding, he's one of those... You, If you've heard of a song in the past 20 years, you've probably heard him. Uh, let's see. I mean, he started playing guitar at the age of 12. I love the fact that Chris Calico's actual name is Samuel William Christopher Watson IV. Jesus! <laughs> Got enough names there! <laughs> Um, oh yeah, signed the same label. He lives in the same hometown. Has been collaborating for years, so it's not surprising. Yeah. And to some things, since he showed up on so many tracks, I can pretty much identify his voice. He's got a pretty good voice. So. Mm. Um, 
Oh, yeah, Gary Clark Jr. has performed with Sheryl Crow, Alicia Keys, the Foo Fighters. No one's ever heard of any of those, don't we? <laughs> Um, he's performed with Jimmy, Jimmy Vaughan uh, performed at the 2010 Crossroads Guitar Festival alongside BB King dead thank you got to see him live before he died so. bastard <laughs> Eric Clapton Buddy Guy Steve Winwood John Mayer Jeff Beck and ZZ Top some pretty high tier stuff there yeah Mick Jagger uh the- He's performed with the Dave Matthews Band. Uh, yeah, a good set of lists. Good set of lists. A good list of collaborative artists. That's what I meant to say. I didn't quite know how I got to what I did. Hmm. I'm still just until you said to me, I said I had no idea what Shiraco actually was. So. Yeah. For those who don't know, it's hot sauce. Yeah, we've got. To, I'm rapping entirely about hot sauce. That's great. That he puts on any everything, including. Oh, th- this is where we get into the uncomfortable lines because, uh, what was the line? Um, I I know it was one of those. What? Uh, did you just what? Um. Is that the song that pronounces but uh, as um Bolognese as Bologna or something? Just to just so it rhymes right. That happens in one of the songs. Maybe not. Uh, but one of the songs is. Past the Sirajka, I put that shit on all of mine. Busting like Columbine combined with a terrorist's mind that's been confined in four walls for some time. Mm. Yes, you heard that well, right. I can't remember that context, but I remember it mentioning ISIS and al Qaeda at least once each on the album as well. Yeah. It's very much <laughs> up-to-date topics. It's one of those... What? What? But there was a lot of this stuff seems to be very much. I'm on your skin that visually I think for the moment it hit the high notes. Someone please let Elton John know. <laughs> yeah, what was with that line? Why are you niggas wiggity wiggity waggity wiggity in the back? I. What are you. It's only like the super fast part at the end. Yeah. Um. I mean. Ah, that's the point of it. Metaphorically speaking, Tech puts fire on all of his tracks, which he showcases with his signature fast flows and aggressive lyricism. Yeah, I can roll with that. So Italy is just declaring his lyrical flow as a hot sauce. Mm. Oh, quote from Tech. I've been reading all the posts asking if the Logic and Joiner Lucas collaboration was ever going to happen, and I'm tired of hiding it from you guys, so I'm going to let you hear what I've been hiding for months, because the excitement is eating me alive with Sriracha on top. <laughs> that is. Um, yeah. I, I would go track by track. Maybe we'll do a track by track for this at some point, but... There's a lot of tracks, for one. Yeah. <laughs> And, like, the shortest track on the album. Other than the skit, at least. It's like three and a half minutes. Or three minutes. 318? 317. It's one that's shorter than the Bruno Sisk. But yeah, um. It's very difficult to talk about this sort of thing because we don't listen to a lot of rap. And we are the whitest of white motherfuckers in the world. We are double white because we're English. We don't even get, um... We're pretty southern English at that. Yeah, so we're triple white. (laughs) We're white, southern, and English. Is it possible to... Oh, yeah, we're quadruple white. We're white, southern, English nerds. (laughs) I do, yeah. What about you, southern, English nerds who are also nocturnal at that? Does that really make us white? We never see the sun, so presumably... Yeah, but by by that logic, I'm not even going to continue down the route I was about to just go down. (laughs) The the answer to that will be steeped in mystery for the rest of the podcast. But yeah. Or YouTube channel, whatever the hell this thing is. Uh, Well, I'm uploading episodes of this onto SoundCloud and Patreon and YouTube. Um... 
once more with Shill. If you want to d have these episodes without any of the adverts, then please go over to my Patreon and you can download them. <laughs> you totally want to go and give money to us. Uh, I'm not going to straight up ask you for... Oh, wait, I just did. Whoops. <laughs> well, to be fair, if they contribute to the Patreon, we will review anything. Yes, even that. Yeah, go to Patreon, pay money, and request a whole bunch of Demper so Ed just dies. Fuck you, Pierce. Why did you have to say that? <laughs> well, because that's a bit of money, then are you not willing to do that? Well, it sounds like we're super desperate for money. Well, this sounds so weird. Oh, for the amount of money I'd be getting for it. Yeah. Yeah, fuck it. You can request anything for us to review. So, Denpa, Nickelback, um, Limp Biscuit. Uh, who are our other whipping boys? I even throw Justin Bieber comes to mind. Justin Bieber. I'd rather you didn't, but if you pay enough, you may think it's a Yeah, Taylor Swift. <laughs> I've got to go Taylor Swift playing at work at the moment. Do you why? Uh, but bear in mind... The song's not even new. <laughs> Bear in mind, it would also mean you could request us to do certain retrospectives. So if you want us to go through the entirety of Tech Nine's discography and review all of that, well, I'd probably be up for that. Cause, you know, I'd be, as I said, I'd be mean to check him out. Yeah, we will do it. I would be up for that because I do really enjoy Tech Nine stuff. Um, also, bear in mind that the that, uh, review requests also apply to the other project, which is my game reviews series, which I'll be starting in the new year. I'm just plugging everything at the moment. Um, but yeah, definitely... Oh, God! Oh, that's rather hilarious. Well, how long have we been off topic? No, um... <laughs> Actually, this is bringing it back to topic. Who did um, the mastery on one of the songs, specifically Sriracha? Uh, Tom okay. Baker. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Probably not the same guy as played Doctor Who, but that is just one of them. Pretty cool if it was. I can't. I somehow can't imagine octogenarian Tom Baker doing rap music mastery. Maybe he has, like, a, just a secret button for it. No. Oh, he's done quite... Oh. Uh, let's see. He's done quite a bit with Tech 9 uh, Sriracha, What If It Was Me, Everybody But Me, Godspeed, Need Jesus, Poisoning the Well, Get Off Me, nice. Weefy, No Run Into Your Mama, The Needle, Hold On Me, Till I'm Gone. A lot of the better tracks then. Yeah. Bus serves. Nice. It, in fact, it looks like he did the mastery for most of this album, if not all of it. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I recommend if you have any interest at all in rap, then this is a pretty good album to so check out. Coming from someone who has a relatively passing interest in rap, this is a good album. <laughs> yeah. I'd say, even if you're not that big into rap, go more for track 8 onwards, because that's when it gets more in-depth and a bit less... This isn't to say that the songs necessarily are brag raps before that point, it's just a lot of them have that sort of feel to them, if that makes sense. I can get where from. Yeah. So if you if you're put off by the whole sort of brag rap style, then going from track eight onwards is better for you. If you like rap in general, then this album in its entirety is going to appeal to you. It is a very strong album, but it it improves as it progresses, which I'd say is better for an album quite often because that leaves you wanting more. That's the problem with so, so, oh, it's a really good album, but it gets like track four or something, and then everything else after that is terrible. It's like... So, a Nickelback album. Well, it doesn't even get track four. Actually, yeah, the, from what I understand, um, all the right reasons, or no, Silver Side Up even, it's like track two onwards. What's the point? <laughs> um, but anyway, bringing it back to this, all I'll say to finish this off, um, what would you. Just as a wrapping up, what would you say is your favourite track on the album? <laughs> hmm? <laughs> wrapping up. <laughs> um, 
you're fired. Uh, to the track, it's probably between the needle and probably needle and what it was me. Yeah, I'd say the needle. What if it was me? And possibly hold on me it, between those three. That poison the well. Yeah, in fact, hand on the heart, I cannot actually say for certain which of those four would be my favourite. All I can say is it is between those four. All four of those are really strong tracks and really showcase the talents of everyone involved. So those would be my recommendations for if you just want to hear some of the songs from the album before committing yourself to the full thing. Which you quite often do. I mean, well, we don't generally buy albums before we review them, for example. Yeah. <laughs> After lots of you, the... 17 year albums or so we did I do actually own about 9 of them there but uh, well <laughs> we went out and bought like 5 of them like, a couple of days after the review <laughs> so put simply the only albums I'm not going to I'm prob- I'm not going to buy would be I don't really buy anything that I rank more than a 4 straight off well I, I wouldn't get the post metal albums for example yeah well What's the point in buying music that you don't like? Yeah. What's the point in buying anything you don't like? Well, well, to be fair, it's not that I don't like them as much as I just can't get into them enough to be able to buy them. What the hell is that? I have no fucking clue. So- someone just drove a helicopter across my house. <laughs> How do you drive a helicopter? I don't know, but whatever. Anyway. It's pretty noisy, whatever it was. Yeah. Anyway, um, not sure what the next review will be, what with timings of everything. So much Christmas stuff going on. Yeah. I mean, as it was to rap goes, I think there is a new one, the Jaws album, confirmed to be coming out soon, so that'd be cool. Yeah. Well, I'd be up for reviewing that when you're next free, which will be in like a billion years. Probably out, yeah, so... It'll be out after Christmas, so presumably in the case of... It won't matter anyway, because I wouldn't have Christmas hours then. Yeah. It's supposed to just be coming next year at some point. I find it's nearly finished, that's all I know. Yeah. Well, actually, I'll talk about that after we've finished recording. But anyway, uh, next review... We'll probably have a guest reviewer if it's before the year-end wrap-up. Um, yeah, because I have, like, one day off between now and Christmas. <laughs> yeah. I fully intend to review the latest Childish Gambino album... So that might be next, and that will probably be Richard guest hosting. We remember him such things as being a gigantic weeb in the last couple of years, two years. Uh, well, he's been on more recent. Remember, he was in the Kiari review. Oh, yeah, that's true. Being a giant weeb. Um, <laughs> wasn't he also in the Soup Kids review? I think he was one there. Hmm? Yeah. He's been also- in the Soup Kids review, the Kiari review, and both of the year end wrap ups. Yeah, he'll be around. Yeah. And we'll do a year and wrap up like usual. And then probably pretty much deciding on what it is already, because I don't think I'm probably going to list anything else new before then. Yeah. But we kind of had it super re- super soon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as, if it's before the year end wrap up, it will be the Childish Gambino review. And if there's one soon after that, I'll just have to look at what's come out and. Just go, ah, who's free to do a review with me? <laughs> Welcome back to the Vanna Jewels. It seems that the release date currently is 13th of January, so it's pretty soon. Well, that can be our first review for the new year. Yeah. Because the year end wrap up will not be released New Year's Eve or New Year's Day. It'll be a couple of days after because we don't want what happened with David Bowie happening. <laughs> yeah. Because this year has been a monster, so... But, anyway. Take nine, good stuff. Yeah. Uh, next review will most likely be a bit more on topic because I actually understand the genre a bit more because that's more jazz, disco stuff. Whereas rap, I'm still very new to. So, other than listening to a, a couple of artists since I was a kid, I don't really have much exposure to it. Yeah. Well, basically, my exposure to most rap has been in the past, like, four years. Mm. So, anyway, definitely check out this album, and check out Tech 9s other stuff. All of it. Yeah. All 17 albums were. Well, 16 albums. 
yeah. check out check all the bits out he's an amazing rapper um don't be surprised if you have to listen to the songs a few times to actually understand what he's saying because some of his flow is sort of like oh god my face is melting this is rock up level yeah anyway that's it for this review see you in the childish gambino review you probably won't see me but hey. yeah anyway that's goodbye from me and goodbye from me I cannot lie, I'm hella busted They say I can't be trusted I ain't got time to love shit, but this does it Loving her even when not in public Goes with me wherever I tug it I'm really done with you Yes, I had a lot of fun with you But your mini will soon be none with you So what you gonna do? It's only one and without it I might lose it I cannot keep a woman cause time with my music, music.